asking as a real novice here, what's the difference from uh, the form, Tai Chi form, without anything, you know, other than your body to deal with, progressing to um, working with sword? First, the element itself. It, the solo form is earth. Mm -hmm. And so when you are doing the form, the solo form, the, it carries the characteristic of that element. So the idea in the solo form is to ground yourself mm -hmm. and to be connected to the earth and to allow that earth energy to move through the body as you go through the movements. Um, it's um, it's not extension. There's no extension. It's the extension is your aura in the space around you. But there's nothing that extends out from the body that is of matter um, mm -hmm. or physical. Um, that the aura is more of the essence of your being, actually a sense that you have that expands out. Whereas when you put something in your hand, you actually then have judgment that is involved with that. So it shows your ignorance and it shows your intelligence in the relationship of judgment and wisdom. Um, so when you put uh, the object in your hand, it's inanimate until you put it into your hand and then it becomes an animate object as a part of yourself. Mm -hmm. And so you express your mm -hmm. knowledge through that instrument. Um, the sword form, because it's water, it has the characteristics of fluidity and the different types of water that exist. Um, the saber form is metal, so its movements are much more sharp and cutting, whereas the sword form is much more compassionate. Um, it, it's more about disarming your opponent or keeping them from using their martial skills towards you or you keeping yourself from your, your defensiveness, you know, um, in relationship to your ego. And so mm -hmm. you just sort of, some, you, you sort of cut it so that it's non-functional anymore but you don't necessarily kill it unless you have to, okay? Um, whereas the knife form or the Tao or saber form, it just cuts. It's like having a knife and the object is to just cut it off. Um, and uh, probably more killing involved with that than a sword form is much more compassionate and it's water mm -hmm. and metal. So the elements and the emotions that go along with those elements are mm -hmm. a part of using the instrument staff form. It's very quick. The movements are very abrupt, quick, knock you out, so to speak. Yeah. Um, and it's it's a shorter form. The knife form is a shorter form. The water form is, is one of the longer forms. And this is a wooden sword that you use for practice. The metal mm -hmm. one I usually use for demonstrations. Yeah. And if I have a specific ritual that I'm doing, then I'll use the metal sword. But when I teach, I mostly use the wooden sword. And most wooden swords are made from two pieces of wood or three pieces of wood. But this, again, was the last of a batch of swords that came through um, that is all one piece of wood. Bring us back to when you first got the sword mm -hmm. that you have in your hands and what that meant to you? Um, because I felt the change from the wooden sword to the metal sword, because I felt that change of the energy flowing through that sword and actually seeing myself extended through it, um, I wanted to have a ritual um, because it represented something to me. Having a sword, because I was involved with um, Buddhist tr uh, meditation, and tradition and Trungpa Rinpoche at that time was very much talking about warriorship. Um, I wanted to have a ritual that represented this, the, the change from wooden sword to metal sword. And I was watching a video one time that um, was playing in Boulder that was put on by Naropa Institute and it was a Taoist monk on, this, on a mountainside and he was doing something, I looked at it and I said, that's very much like my sword form. And so he was doing this sword form and I, uh, and I, 
And someone in the film asked him, what are you doing out there waving around this sword on the hillside? And he said he was fighting the demons of the world. And at that point, I started to think about spirit and my spirit and, um, and the notion of cutting through my materialism and my ego, which was much of the teachings of Trump Rinpoche. And so the sword then represented to me that cutting through of my ego and my materialism. So I wanted to have someone um, do a ritual, a blessing. And none of the Tai Chi instructors that I knew actually um, had such a clean sense of the meditative, the spiritual aspect and relationship with, um, with the martial art that I was practicing. They each had their individual sense of it, but they didn't really um, have the ritual, the richness of the ritual sense of that spiritual connection. So um, since I said, well, it's about really and truly meditation, Tai Chi is meditation in motion, I decided that I would ask Trungpa Rinpoche to bless my sword. Um, and um, uh, so I had to, there was a whole ritual that I had to go through to get him to, to the point of doing that. I had to ask his secretary who went back to him, who came back to me the next day and said, okay, he said, why? And so I told you know, the reason being that um, he was a master of meditation and that um, I wanted to have someone that connected, bless my soul. So she goes away, she comes back the next day, she says, he said, okay, come here this time, this day. And so I went that day and I had on uh, much more of a tattered kung fu-like outfit black and the traditional black and white outfit and it was worn um, and I was much younger and so I uh, sat I decided I was going to sit in a half lotus I sat up on these pillows on the side waiting for him and I waited for like three hours by the time I got to three and a half hours I, I said oh he's not coming so I left and um, so I went back to the secretary two days later and I said what happened and she said oh, well what do you mean I said, well, I was supposed to, you know, he was supposed to, and so she says, well, let me go ask him. So then she came back to me the next day, and she said, he wants to know why he wants him to bless you. So I told her, she went back, she came back, she said, okay, he said, come here this day, this time. So that day, that time, same town at Alfred, I decided I'd go to the New Age Cafe, which was just across the uh, uh, street from where Naropa was at that time, and eat. You know, at the time, I said, he's not going to get here on time. So I was eating, and then at a certain I started to feel the hairs on the back of my neck move and on uh, my legs move and I said I better get over there so I went over there and I and he hadn't been there and I sat down and all of a sudden there was like this intense feeling like a, a rumbling of some kind and the doors flew open it was ten minutes after I had gotten there so I was like right on time the doors flew open and about 50 bars were gone came through in suits and ties, and he came in in his robe, uh, walking through the middle of them. They lined the hallways, and he went to the back, and they sent someone out to get me. And he, um, I got back there, and he asked me in his funny little voice why I wanted my sword blessed, and I told him. And I had to give him something of value um, that was part of the uh, ritual. So I gave him this gold ring that I had, and uh, he took my sword and he chanted. And he ran his finger up one side, ran his finger down the other side, and he just kept chanting, doing this. And then he took the sword and he blew on it. And then he gave it back to me and he patted me on my shoulder and he said, keep practicing. So I took the sword out and my New York kicked in and I started saying, well, now, what did he just say? He said, <laughs> she just gave me a gold ring. I've got something of value. She's a fool, you know. And I said, I was taken. He said, I don't know what he said, you know. So I figured that I would go out. It was a beautiful day. And Boulder, because of his presence, you could walk around with a sword and no one was going to stop you. The police were all very used to the warrior presence in Boulder. So uh, I went to the library and I took the sword out and I said, well, I might as well practice. It was a 
wonderful. It was sort of, I think it was like a fall, crisp fall day. And I took the sword out and I started practicing. And then at one point I threw the sword up like this and the blue sky reflected off of the metal. So I really couldn't see the metal very well, but I saw this ripple of breath flowing up. So then I realized that um, there was something very powerful to ritual and his ability in ritual to uh, transmit that energy of spirituality. Wow.